Welcome to Haker Equipment Company's training on Elgin Crosswind. Model J3000 and up, including Tier 4. This class is on the water spray system, power unit, and fan. My name is Kerry Alcott. The titles of this series of the Crosswind training are Operating Principles, Component Adjustments, Inside the Cab Controls, Water System, Power Unit, and Fan, Operator Maintenance and Washdown, and Options. Dust Control Water Spray System the hydrant fill hose has a cam lock on one end and a two and a half inch NST female on the opposite end. Connects here to the male cam lock. For water tank fill. The hose can be used on the rear door for washout if the deluge system is installed. The deluge system is an option. The water filter. The water shutoff valve, so you can stop the water from draining from the tanks. The water filter is a daily cleaning. For cold weather storage, this filter is to be removed and the shutoff valve left open. Store the filter inside the cab. There are two types of water spray systems. The standard water spray system has two electric centrifugal pumps. The PM10 system has a larger centrifugal pump that could be belt driven or hydraulic driven. The standard system has two electric pumps that will turn on when a spray function is turned on. The right pump feeds the solenoid manifold that has the left gutter broom, right gutter broom, and front spray bar solenoids. At the bottom of this manifold is a drain valve. Open this valve for cold weather storage. The left pump is labeled center and feeds the three nozzles in the suction tube of the pickup head and to the nozzles in the air pressure slot. On the PM10 system, the solenoid feeds the suction tube and the nozzles inside the hopper. To prepare this circuit for cold weather, with the water filter off and the shutoff valve open, Energize the center water switch and let it run for 30 seconds. The PM10 water pump on a John Deere engine is belt driven. Do not over tighten the belt. On a CNG engine or on the shared power sweepers, this pump is hydraulic driven. For cold weather, open the drain valve on the back of the pump. At some time, you might need to prime the pump of air. With the engine off, fill the pump with water through the plug at the top of the pump. Before starting the engine, have the water tank full and the air purged from the filter. Wash down hose connection. This is intended for cleaning the hopper door seal between dumps of the hopper. To use this wash down hose, the auxiliary engine must be running. Water tank fill from the hydrant hose. A water fill air gap is required by California state law. This prevents siphoning water back into the hydrant system. The adjustment of this gap is two and a half times the ID of the inlet pipe. The drain for the water tank is located on the right side below the rear bumper. This is one of the cold weather drain points. The water system plumbing drawing suction side. Optional water tanks. Main water tank. Shut off valve. Water filter. Check valve. PM10 water pumps or the electric pumps. Pressure side. Wash down hose and quick disconnects. 
solenoid valves, pickup head, and hopper. Solenoid valves, brooms, and front spray bar. Wandering hose. Nozzle location. In the hopper of a PM10 machine, there is a trap door ahead of the screen on the left side. The trap door has two latches and the door hinges down to expose the spray nozzles. These nozzles will spray a cone pattern. Do not clean with a tip cleaner. Use air pressure to blow the dirt into the nozzle, remove the plug at the end of the tube, then turn the water on and flush out the dirt. Pickup head and suction hose. The three nozzles that are in the suction tube are the most important to have working. The debris you're picking up will pass through these spray nozzles and gain weight. When the debris gets into the hopper, it will drop out of the airflow better and will protect your fan from sandblasting. You will find a quarter turn shutoff valve on these nozzles. The only purpose for this is to turn off the water in adobe type dirt where the suction hose plugs up with clay. If your application has a lot of adobe, you can move these nozzles to the top of the suction hose. Additional parts would be required. To clean these nozzles, disconnect the suction hose at the quick clamp. Use an air hose to blow the dirt back into the nozzle. At the last nozzle, there's a plug. Remove the plug and run the water circuit to flush out the dirt. Gutter Brim Dust Control These nozzles are a fan spray design on a quick disconnect for easy cleaning. Pulling on the collar on the back of the fitting will release the nozzle assembly from the tube. Clean by using compressed air only. Don't use a tip cleaner or try to dig the dirt out of the nozzle. Doing so will deform the spray pattern and will no longer be PM10 compliant. Power Unit John Deere Engine John Deere Tier 4 Engine The auxiliary engine supplies power to the belt that turns the fan. Drive pulley. Idler pulley. Adjust the tension on the belt. Fan pulley. Belt should not squeal. If it does, it needs adjustment. The belt cost about $1,000. Do not run if it squeals. The auxiliary engine also supplies power to the hydraulic pump. On the John Deere, the pump is mounted to the engine. On a CNG engine, the hydraulic pump is belt driven. Fan and drive belt. Inspection cover. At the top of the fan housing is an inspection cover and is held in place by two stainless nuts. The fan is made of Hardix brand hardened steel. This is the side of the blade that pushes the air. The fan has balance weights welded to it, so there is no welding on this assembly. The fan is mounted on the fan shaft and is supported by two pillow block bearings. A new fan is made with 1 quarter inch thick Hardix steel. Impeller inspection. An impeller in good condition is both safe and efficient. Inspect the impeller for unusual wear. Do not remove inspection cover while auxiliary engine is running. 
Loosen the stainless nuts and remove the inspection door. Check the impeller weldment for buildup of foreign material and, if necessary, clean it by scraping the debris off the blades. A buildup of debris will cause a vibration that can shake the machine apart. Note the condition of the welds and the vane and the overall condition of the fan. When the vanes have worn down to a knife edge condition, replace the weldment with a new one. Here are fans that have worn due to debris allowed to go through the fan. When operating, it is important to operate at only enough RPMs you need to do a good job and to use water in the suction tube, labeled center. If you see wear, a sharpening like knife edge, and wear on the vein welds, you need to make corrections to stop the wear. These corrections need to take place before the fan looks like this. Modifications inside the hopper, like hanging a deflector to deflect the debris away from the screens, is okay to do. Here was used a piece of metal and added water spray nozzles. You could use a mud flap or chain about 12 inches long hanging from the leading edge of the screens. These suggestions are useful depending on your sweeping conditions. While doing your inspection, look down the inlet and inspect the safety wire that locks the bolts from backing off. Watch for missing or loose bolts. Check the condition of the fan to body transition seal. Power band adjustment. Report to mechanics when belt squeals, or if you are the one responsible, adjust immediately. Allowing a belt to squeal will cause expensive damage. It will shorten the life of the belt, wear the shivs on the pulleys, and will transfer heat into the bearings. Grease points. Two pumps of grease with a hand grease gun at the end of each shift. Do not over grease. Use Shell Gaddis S3 V220C2 grease. Proper lubrication. Lubrication should be done by the use of a hand grease gun. This way you can feel the grease going into the fitting. You can feel how much pressure is being applied to push the grease in. You can feel it if the fitting is plugged and not taking grease. You can measure how much grease you put into the fitting. You will know that the fitting was greased properly. Lever type grease gun. 33 strokes for 1 ounce output. Working pressure. 6,000 PSI. Shell Gaddis S3 V220C greases are premium multi-purpose greases based on high viscosity index mineral oil and a lithium complex soap thickener. They contain the latest additives to offer excellent high temperature oxidation performance and other additives to enhance its anti-oxidation, anti-wear, and anti-corrosion properties. Shell Gaddis S3 V220C greases are especially suitable for bearings operating at high temperatures and under load. Note, failure to use NLGI Grade 2 grease can affect bearing warranty. Bearing Grease Procedure The units are filled with grease prior to leaving the factory. After the first 50 hours, we recommend that 13 cc or 0.44 ounces of grease should be added. Then every 50 hours, we recommend that 13 cc or 0.44 ounces of grease should be added. Key bits of information. When a bearing is running, it will get hot. The grease will turn to a liquid and seep from the seals of the bearing. 
Applying two pumps of grease after every shift just maintains the proper oil level. A bearing when overfilled with grease will run hotter. That excessive heat will take the temper out of the steel of the balls in the bearing and the bearing will fail. Bearings fail due to water contamination, lack of lubrication, excessive heat, vibration and misalignment. The RPMs of a crosswind fan is approximately two and a half times faster than the engine RPMs. Sweep at the lowest RPMs to just do what works. This will help save your bearings but will also reduce the carryover and help save the fan. Understand what the vacuum enhancer is doing and work it before changing RPMs. Avoid hitting the fan bearings with water during a washdown. A belt that is squealing is slipping and generates heat. This heat can transfer through the pulley and shaft to the bearing. Pulley alignment is very important to get even traction across the width of the belt.